Well, this is how you know when a bait maker's going fishing right there. So I'm at Happy Jack's. This is Happy Jack's boat. We're gonna go up river uh, above Lake Talquin here in town to go try to catch some white bass during their spawn run or something like that. That's what we think. But uh, I am dropping him off some dead on plastic because he's a bait maker now and I'm like the best friend ever. Yeah. So uh, you can't have the whole thing, but but we can pump you out maybe like an inch or an inch and a half, inch and a half. You can't stir it with that. All right, Happy Jack is gonna, gonna he's gonna deliver himself some place. It's okay if it spills all over the tailgate. Basically, we just got an oil funnel and <laughs> let her rip, dude. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. That plastic goodness there. I had to stir it with a broomstick handle. <laughs> so, I hope you got enough resin uh, stirred up in there. I did, I did the best that I could. So, if all your baits come out gooey, just give me a call. I'll come, re I'll, I'll, I'll come refill you. All right, so we are on the O'Clockney River, the Highway 90 bridge. It is absolutely chilly as can be, but uh, we're gonna go try these white bass. They come up here to spawn from the lake down below, and um, <clears throat> sometimes you can have a good trip. So we're gonna see what happens. Guys. <laughs> These are like two pound white bass. Holy smoke, dude. Yeah, get him in the box. I gotta get back out of <laughs> Holy cow. We are crushing them on these bomber crankbaits. Right, or, or just whatever they are. Yeah, I'm telling you. And, uh, like, most of the time, you don't catch white bass two pounds. But uh, this river's kind of known for them. All right, y'all. We have laid the smack down on some big white bass. Right. We're now going back up to the I-10 bridge. Uh, just uh, uh, we, we think there's just more up there. The river's fat, the current's faster and it's shallower. So we're gonna go try them up there again and uh, let y'all know how we do. There's like a heavy metal band up here. In college, I played here a couple of times. Used to, used to be called the Riverfront. <laughs> oh man, some skinhead music. <laughs> Look at that guy headbanging up there. Well, we've already kind of split them up into thirds. We gave some to a gentleman down here at the ramp. Happy Jack's got his, still in his live well. So that's just my share. We, uh, we wound up putting an absolute hurting on him. My, my, what a mess. So uh, if y'all remember the last video we did, we were introducing the fishing all out bait makers hot plate and uh, I've actually been sick. So um, I have actually not poured on this since that video. I've only poured one set of baits on it. Um, so with that's, that's really sad. It's been a whole week, but uh, I'm feeling better. So uh, after yesterday's fishing trip, I wanted to come out here and uh, make some stuff. And I think we're gonna run some chatterbait trailers. One of my favorite molds. It's a uh, bass tackle mold, super fun. It's been on the channel before, but uh, Happy Jack wanted some more of those, and I want some more. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So it got down to 25 degrees at my house last night. That is cold for Florida. So we've got the knit hat on and everything. Um, we're actually gonna do some laminate injection in this, uh, uh, chatterbait mold here and uh, those cold <coughs> these cold temperatures might make that a little bit tricky so we may have to preheat the mold blast it with a torch or um, put it on one of the cheap pancake griddles or something you know kind of off to the side just to heat it up so uh, yeah it's absolutely chilly but um, it won't be for long so real quick before we uh, get started I wanted to show y'all a recent pour um, so these, those eyeballs right there, oops, out of focus, those are Jetson Aqua Eyes. They have sort of some purples and greens. And so you can see I kind of poured a pattern to complement that with the purple and green. And uh, I called these Aqua Bluegill. So lots of um, intricate skin pouring, layering there. And uh, of course some blending to make it look uh, smooth and natural. And uh, I thought the eyes matched really, really well. 
so yeah there's a recent recent hand pour endeavor right there looking good all right here we go one side gets a little bit of brown okay this is four cups of plastic so two cups per per uh each side here and uh yeah they might need a little bit longer to cook but that's okay the sparkle flake stuff is very very temperature sensitive so you really really want to try to keep your plastic at like 330 or lower uh, whenever using this sparkle flake stuff um, if you want a little bit more in-depth information on how to use this this stuff right here sparkle flake i have a dedicated video called how to use sparkle glitter or sparkle flake and uh, it goes into depth on how you have to be careful with your uh, temperatures and such so basically brown with a little bit of black for the top color gives me a nice dark brown yeah just like that and we probably need probably need a little bit more saturation than that let's see yeah that's looking pretty light so we're gonna go ahead and just do that again just add some more brown just to kind of thicken things up a little bit and then we'll add a few more drops of black <clears throat> to kind of darken it back maybe just maybe even just one more drop of black really we just want to get a nice dark chocolate basically yeah but we want enough saturation to where we can have um, some good contrast of the colors yeah a little bit more and then the bottom color is just clear with the sparkle flake it is awesome stuff awesome color this is probably Yamamoto's most popular color maybe ever uh, particularly in this uh, kind of chatterbait trailer mold yeah looking good there mm-hmm it's about right <clears throat> let's see how the other side is yeah we might need to pop that back in the microwave this is dead on plastic swim bait blend this is from the same bucket that happy jack and i were pumping out on my tailgate yesterday so this stuff is getting some good use but anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna heat both these cups up a little bit more just get all the plastic in the cups cooked before we then take the temperature back down to add the sparkle flake because I don't want the sparkle flake being microwaved any more times than absolutely necessary. Okay, here comes the magic. Let's uh, get our spoons out here. And uh, basically we are just loading it with the violet sparkle flake. So here we go. Stuff is absolutely incredible very expensive and uh, lure works here makes probably the most heat tolerant uh, version of it that you can add straight to the plastic now anytime you have a sparkle glitter like this um, you know you can always add it to like a clear coat or a clear dip you know it has a lot of great uses yeah well, check that out <clears throat> has a lot of great uses other than just putting it straight into hot plastic here because it it can be tricky you know just a few degrees too uh too hot and you've basically got a bunch of unusable stuff um so it can be probably pretty frustrating to a lot of people who uh haven't had a haven't haven't got a lot of experience with it and uh and, and it's expensive too so you're you're kind of mad when you waste it but basically we're just adding a metric ton of it again it's a very expensive color to make <laughs> by the time you factor in the cost that this alone is like 15 or 16 dollars just for that little jar so anyway i'm hoping that we get some good results here this is looking about right i've done this color before on camera so uh hopefully we do it justice but uh now it's time to see what it looks like all right here we go let's do a round and see how they uh see how they turned out here we go it's 
a single port top injection. So um, each cavity kind of has its own port here. And uh, you have to know the configuration of the mold. Which side is top, which side is bottom. This first shot might be a little off because the mold, you know, is still a little bit cold. Yeah, you can see that plastic wants to gum up on me. But we're going to keep going. See how we do. Okay, there it is. We had two not come out. They, uh, they just kind of sucked in some air from the top. But look at that. There it is. That is the infamous, infamous electric shad with the real sparkle flake in the chatterbait trailer mold. I think Yamamoto calls theirs the Zeiko. We can call this the whatever we want. Yeah, nice even laminate. Again, you have to shoot really low temperatures to get an even laminate in this mold. But you're gonna be, you're gonna be trying to shoot these as cold as possible anyway because of that sparkle flake. So that really shouldn't be a problem there. And get it over here. Yeah, there it is. Check that out. Awesome color. Look at that sparkle. Sweet, okay. The color, I think the color's good. Now we just wanna have a bunch of those at the end of the video. Okay, round two, here we go. This should go a little smoother now that everything's uh, a little bit more warmed up. It's had some plastic run through it. So everything's not as cold. Yeah, that was much better. The plastic flowed a lot better, and we were able to um, refill each individual port, which means we should not have any air pockets in the noses. Uh, so hopefully we got all of those to come out. Just realized I forgot drum roll earlier. Here we go with freezing cold hands. Drum roll, please. These felt like they came out better, so hopefully they actually did. So far, so good. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. All six came out. Looks like no air pockets in the noses. Pretty even laminate all the way through. Minimal denting. It's such a thick body bait. Sometimes you get a little kind of denting right in here. Um, but over the years, the more baits I've made, the less I care about denting, especially with laminate injection. Some things are just kind of inevitable. <clears throat> All right, there it is. That is perfection in this mold. This color, absolutely. I mean, just look at that. Look at this. Wow. There it is. Can't do it any better than that, y'all. Boom. I cannot wait for that summertime ledge bite. These really shine, uh, even though it's a chatterbait trailer. Put these on the back of some other wire baits and see how that goes. Sometimes it just adds a little bit of profile and that's all that matters. So yeah, that's cool. I like how the mold laminates a little asymmetrically. That's because it's an asymmetrical cavity, right? Not both sides of the bait are the exact same. You have a little bit more, you know, belly here. And so that kind of allows that plastic to laminate kind of very organically sloppy, which I think looks really good. Even when you laminate them uh, at low temperatures, they're never quite perfect, which I like. Heck yeah, there's another successful round. Sweet, sweet, right on, right on. Oh man, 
These are just too doggone sexy right here. Electric shad, baby. It's basically just Tennessee shad with the blue, uh, sorry, with the um, violet sparkle flake. That's pretty much what this is. Take that, uh, take that sparkle flake out and you've basically got a nice, a nice Tennessee shad. Here we go, another round. They are still looking fresh. Look at that flake. Yep. Still looking good. Still looking good. Hopefully we'll get a couple more rounds and we'll have an absolute uh, big old box of those. So I'm excited. This is super fun. I've been waiting to kind of shoot this mold again. I needed it to get a little bit warmer out. You know, I haven't really found a whole lot of use for these in the winter unless they're really munching shad. Like I said, my boat was in the shop. Pretty much I missed the entire winter because my boat was in the shop. So I didn't really get on our wintertime shad bite. So now we're kind of moving into bedding season and spring and um, I'll be using a lot of these hopefully as it warms up <clears throat> um, if I actually get a chance to go fishing that is. All right, so we successfully got kind of some of the remelt and leftovers uh, remelted into the smaller size cups which will allow us probably two more runs with the mold and uh, then we'll have a big old box of these for our personal stash. So. I'm excited guys. I don't really ever make stuff for me all that often. Um, you know, I like to pour a lot of swim baits to sell because they're in demand and uh, you know, they make good money. It's fun. Hand pouring allows me to really challenge myself. Every now and then I need some stuff for my own, uh, own tackle box. All right, that is the last of the plastic. So we'll probably get one more full run of the mold and uh, then we're gonna tally them up and call this one a day. All right, there it is. There's that final run from what we just showed you. Really no discernible change. So I am hap, 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 happy. We now have a ton of these electric chad, chatter, Zaco, whatever you want to call them, uh, ready for action. So I need to do this again and uh, sell them to, to a few people. I'm sure there's a lot of people who would like to have have some of those. These are for personal use, but um, yeah, if you are a bait maker at home and have not tried this recipe, definitely try it. It's actually quite simple. Brown, black, and some sparkle flake. You can even uh, get a different color sparkle flake. You could use hologram flake. You don't even have to use the temperature sensitive stuff, you know. Um, that's the beauty of custom bait making. You can kind of do this however you want. But this is an absolute winner, and uh, now we have a ton of them. We'll show you those in just a moment. All right, everyone. Uh, sorry for a little bit of laundry noise in the background. We all know how I feel about that. But yeah, how about this a tray of these? We're going to lather them up in worm oil. <clears throat> yeah. That'll kind of really shine them up, if you know what I mean. Toss them. You can also uh, add scent this way, you know, instead of just tossing them in warm oil, toss them in, uh, you know, garlic or uh, anise or um, crawfish or whatever, whatever scent you want. You can just kind of get a little Tupperware like this. Literally just toss them like you're cooking in the kitchen and, um, you know, basically just kind of let them sit, bag them up, and then voila, you now have scented baits. And uh, I always recommend adding the scent after the baits <clears throat> have been made. Never add it to, to the actual hot plastic. Um, the temperatures to me just kind of cook the scent off and you don't really get, I just don't think you get the best bang per your buck. I think your scent um, is always gonna do better added this way right here. All right, all right, those are looking good. That's quite a few. Look at that. Look at that goodness. Yes. Always fun making some stuff for your own stash. Never forget to do that. <laughs> All this stuff, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I rarely ever make stuff for me, but now that the boat's back, I am hopeful 
that we'll get out and do some more fish. And now I got to make a bunch of frogs because y'all know I love to frog fish. But uh, yeah, whenever this bite starts happening, we will be ready. Now let's check on those white bass. Now I have to clean those. Yep, they're still frozen in there. So yeah, we're actually going to, uh, <clears throat> golly, I still cannot believe the size of these. That's a white bass, y'all. Um, that's absolutely enormous. So yeah, a little fish fry tonight at the Jones house. So I am looking forward to that. But uh, now that I'm done uh, making baits today, now I got to go clean fish. Always love how tall their dorsal spikes are. Absolutely amazing fish. Amazing fishing yesterday, so hopefully we will get to do that again soon. All right, y'all. Well, that's going to wrap this video up. Thank uh, thank everyone, or thanks everyone uh, who tuned in today and uh, took time out of your schedules to watch me uh, go fishing and make a few baits. So uh, that's what it's all about. That's why we make our own stuff, is for uh, to exercise the creative side of things and to hopefully catch a fish on it. Now, yesterday, you know, they really only wanted crankbaits. They wanted a crankbait that was digging along the bottom. Um, they were not suspended, at least not that we could tell. We we threw a few plastics at those um, white bass. They wanted a crankbait that was digging, and they really wanted it <coughs> more in a crawfish color. Um, you know, we caught some on some chartreuse, but uh, that river's full of crawfish, and a lot of those white bass are, uh, are feeding on those crawfish. And in fact, a lot of people who get real serious about fishing for the white bass in the rivers here, their preferred bait is actually a small live crawfish. So um, kind of makes sense that they want something scurrying along the bottom like that, like a square bill, like a crankbait in a crawfish color. So, um, you know, that actually made total sense to me. But uh, anyway, um, thank y'all for being here. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know uh, some, some uh, future bait video ideas that you would like to see, and we will try to make it happen. Until then, we'll see you in the next one.